In the previous videos, we've exported bibliographic data from EndNote and imported it into Envivo. Here is the resulting project. This video is going to very quickly revisit some of the queries we've already considered to look at how they can be used for the literature. I'm going to start by heading to the Explorer ribbon and choosing the text search query. This is a great way for me to query the articles I have here to see how a word is used in context of the literature. For example, one of the terms I'm really interested in in the context of my literature is place. So I'm going to search to see where it appears. I've typed place in the search for, and then I'm going to choose selected folders and limit this just to my literature folder within files. This will exclude my externals and the memos I have, stopping duplication of data from the abstracts listed there. I'm now going to run this query. On ordering by references, I can already see which articles consider this idea more than others. There's some at the top which have high numbers of double or even triple digits of usage, compared to some near the bottom where the words barely used at all. Of course, I need to consider the very format of the literature. If I look at this particular article, for example, by double clicking on it in files, we can see because it has the word place in the title, it features here as well as across multiple pages in this particular file. It's also important to note that anything in journal titles and author names is repeated multiple times on each paper. This can skew those textual number results in this query. However, my favourite view of the text search query for literature is the word tree. In one click glance, I can see how this word is used in the context of the literature. Let's scroll to the top. We can see here that the library as place is a key theme mentioned across lots of articles, even though I've not read them yet. I can also see the library is framed as a meeting place, a public place, a second place, and a third place. This is really interesting because it gives me very quick insights into the literature about how a term is used. Obviously, I can't rely on this over reading. I still need to read and go through those articles in detail, but this is a great way for me to gain some quick insights. On the topic of quick insights, I'm going to head back to the Explore ribbon and look at the word frequency query. Again, I'm going to go to selected folders and just limit this to the literature folder. And then I'm going to ask it to display the 100 most used words and I'm going to get it to use stems to group them together and run the query. Just to make this a bit easier, I'm going to immediately skip to the word cloud visualization, which will give me a pictorial representation of each of those 100 words. The bigger the word, the more frequently it's used in the literature. Again, there will be some caveats with this visualization. Because of the nature of the literature, Article titles and journal titles are repeated continually across the top of many, many articles. You'll also th see things like dates crop up frequently because of the nature of in-text Harvard citations. But there's still some really useful things we can see here. Library, service, place, inform, geographically, research, space, books, academic, accessing, and more are all clearly key findings and key themes across this literature. Again, this is no replication for me reading. I still need to really get to grips with the source content. However, this is a very interesting snapshot for key ideas in the literature. It might even get me to dive in quickly to look at some particular ideas. For example, I'm surprised to see closure is here as one of those most common words. So I'm going to right click it and choose open code preview for closure. Just scrolling through, I can already see this idea is mentioned across multiple articles. This is interesting and actually is something I hadn't spotted in my initial reading. 
this is a really useful thing because it's going to influence me to go back to read these articles and identify if there's any themes that I may have forgotten. Heading back to the explore ribbon, we can see we've got queries like the matrix coding query, the coding query, and the crosstab query. However, all of these queries are going to rely on further coding in this, but it shows that we can still further visualize the literature once we've gone through and done that coding analysis. Now you're probably ready to go and see what you can find from the literature in your subject area.